Good morning, friends. Oracle Cloud is a new buzzword, and there is a lot of talk around Oracle Cloud and the company's focus on moving on to the cloud. Shrikant Navelkar, who is with me today, is director at Clover Infotech, and he has been for over two decades uh, managing a customer's journey from our end into Oracle EPS solutions, as well as uh, recent, more recently, migrating them into Oracle Cloud. So this session aims at enabling you to get insights from our expert, Shrikan Navalkar, on how customers are benefiting from the journey of moving on to Oracle Cloud and what's in it for them. So Shrikan, welcome and uh, very glad to have you and uh, have your, you share uh, your insights with our viewers on sure. Oracle Cloud. So first thing I wanted to understand is that uh, what are the kind of companies, what are the kind of profile of these companies that are going to move on to from EBS on-premise to cloud? What, what will be your typical company that will move on from EBS to cloud? Well, the good, the good news is that any company who has uh, invested in Oracle e-business on-premise can now take advantage of the Oracle cloud, the infrastructure, the cloud services very easily. So it's irrespective of the industry irrespective of the size of the company. Uh, any company can do this. But I think two basic drivers, uh, you know, when I meet customers, there are two basic drivers I can see for the customers. Number one, customers who are running Oracle e-business on maybe on the legacy platform and would like to get into the more open platform like Linux. Uh, second set of customers, customers who are trying to bring more and more functionalities into their Oracle e-business by integrating with the other applications or third-party softwares like LinkedIn and Facebooks of the world today, or maybe YouTube for that matter. So they would like to integrate that. So they want to expand their Oracle e-business capabilities as such. But if you ask me from the industry perspective, size perspective is irrespective of anything. Any company who has Oracle e-business on premise can now take advantage of the Oracle infrastructure and the cloud services very easily. Sure. So, so what we understand is any, any company, irrespective of size, if they, if they have invested or decided to invest in Oracle EBS on premise, uh, there is a definite uh, path and positive yes. move when they are moving on to the Oracle cloud. Great. So, so if a company decides to move on to the cloud, on premise to the cloud or Oracle EBS, what are the typical challenges that they face and how do they overcome? Them? So, more than challenges for moving the e-business to cloud, uh, what I've seen, when customer think about cloud, he has certain questions in his mind. Number one, how seamless that migration is going to be. Number two, uh, who is going to take the end-to-end -end responsibility of migrating and post-migration, uh, you know, maintenance of that. Number three, will I be able to seamlessly integrate that on cloud uh, application with my on-premise because I may not be able to move everything to cloud. Number four, how flexible is my cloud vendor in terms of providing me uh, the infrastructure at the lower cost? And the fifth thing, uh, how secure the environment is. Right. So these are the typical questions customers uh, have in their mind when they're planning their cloud journey. And I strongly believe, or whenever I meet customers, I strongly suggest that if you're planning your Oracle Cloud, if you're planning your cloud transformation, don't leave out your uh, e-business out of it. Because now with Oracle Cloud, Oracle Infrastructure as a cloud, you can easily move it to cloud as it is. Sure. So, so you mentioned that any type of company, irrespective of the size or revenue or so on, can move on. But still, you know, when we do such migrations, one of the key thoughts in the company's mind is what are the kind of investments that I have to make. So in this regard, what is what is your view to them or insight to them? So it's very simple. Uh, customers need to consider two things. One is that, uh, what is called, because it's a cloud, it's called a subscription, it's not called license. One is that, how much they're going to pay uh, for uh, taking the infrastructure on the cloud right. on a subscription yearly basis. And second is that, uh, is there any additional investment they have to make on their e-business licenses? Uh, the answer to the second question is no. Uh, if you already have valid e-business licenses on premise, you can bring those licenses as it is to the cloud. Only the investment you have from your side is to do the subscription-based investment on the infrastructure which you need it. And uh, that's very elastic infrastructure in the sense that you can go uh, with the infrastructure as it is first, 
and then you can keep on increasing that uh, you know as you grow and, and, and that's the biggest advantage but there's no additional investment from your side on the software side if you have the valid licenses you can bring it to the cloud that's great I think uh, many of the viewers and even if they are smaller companies they'll be delighted to know that you know something like uh, this can happen at uh, whatever optimum level of investments so uh, one question that I had and I'm sure many of our viewers would also have uh, is that and, and this comes from a reading that I had of a report wherein uh, they were saying that in the next three to four years CTOs uh, you know 15 percent of them have preferred moving to an AWS vis-a-vis uh, -vis, there was a five six percent that was uh, saying they want to move to an Oracle cloud uh, I'm, while I'm sure Oracle might have come in a bit late into the picture but uh, why do you recommend or prefer an Oracle Cloud over and above an AWS or so on? One of the reasons why I think Oracle Cloud makes a lot of sense to uh, customers, number one, Oracle's cloud strategy is very really complete. Uh, on one side, they have infrastructure as a cloud, the way you know you get it from Amazon. So you can build your infrastructure in an elastic manner, the way you go. On the other side, you have wide variety of applications. Uh, in the software as a service model, where you have uh, human resource, recruitment, uh, sales, marketing, supply chain, all these applications, modern applications available on the cloud. But the most important thing Oracle provides is the middle part, which is called as a platform as a service pass, where you can actually integrate your cloud to cloud application, cloud to on-premise application. You can bring in business intelligence on top of it. You can bring your development environment into the cloud. So a lot of this surrounding uh, cloud solutions you have, you know, when you move to cloud. So they have infrastructure, they have softwares, and on, and on the same side, they have these platforms. And I think that's one of the reason why I call Oracle's cloud strategy is a complete strategy. And I think Oracle e-business customers should move to Oracle Cloud rather than moving to Amazon Cloud uh, because strategy is complete. They can have a roadmap for the next uh, three to five years. They can integrate the application very easily, their own application or third party applications. They can bring a lot of business intelligence on top of it. And, and most importantly, it's one single vendor. So you get uh, support for your application, you get support for your infrastructure from one single vendor. And at the same time, although it's out of scope for today's discussion, Oracle has done a lot of things to make, to run Oracle software faster on Oracle Cloud as compared to other clouds. So I think these are the main reasons why I would feel any Oracle customer, although any non-Oracle uh, workload can also move to cloud, but any Oracle customer should first consider moving to Oracle Cloud rather than anything else. I mean, I, I think that is some good insight for our users and viewers. Uh, so one thing I wanted to understand is, uh, and, and uh, over the interaction that I've known, uh, you putting in some phases into moving on from Oracle EBS to Oracle Cloud or any, any other such migrations for that matter. So uh, just for the benefit of our users, can you, uh, this entire migration from on-premise to cloud for Oracle EBS, can you put it into a, a three, four phases or something like that, where sure. they can understand that, okay, there is phase one, phase two, phase three, and then You've done your migration. Sure. Is there something that you can enlighten? Yeah, we have we have built that because we always believe that uh, when you're moving to the cloud, it's not a one-time uh, engagement. It's a, it's an ongoing engagement. So what we do over here, as soon as we start engagement with the customer, before even moving the customer to the cloud, we actually educate the customer. Mm -hmm. We educate the customer in understanding their environment, their licensing, uh, how much infrastructure they would need to buy on the Oracle Cloud. Uh, uh, what about the customization of Oracle e-business, whether that can be taken to the cloud, how we're going to do it. So we take a workshop for our customers to explain the entire thing. We talk about, about the, you know, their investment on cloud, their investment of actually moving to the cloud. But the most important thing is that post uh, migration, we provide them something like three months to six months support. So we do the complete hands holding with them uh, till they're comfortable with Oracle Cloud. Because uh, we don't want any change uh, uh, from the user experience perspective if they're moving from on device to cloud. In fact, uh, customers should never, the business user should never know that instead of uh, connecting to a server over here, he's connecting to a server on the cloud. So we try to achieve that. Sure. So we provide three to six months kind of 
uh, post migration support to them for them to make it comfortable. And during that, we talk to them about integrations, we talk to them about how to expand, how to make their applications mobile, whole lot of things you know you get it as a package. Sure, sure. So, so just to sum it up for the user, uh, what you're saying is uh, first you would consult the customer studying their on-premise uh, infrastructure and then you would probably take a workshop where you recommend or consult and get together and understand their ideas and create a roadmap. Then you do the my actual migration onto the cloud and then you are supporting so that Correct. the entire operation is seamless. Correct. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. So Shrikant, uh, thank you very much for your time and taking out time for our users and uh, I am I'm sure uh, the, the viewers might have enjoyed and uh, learned a lot from uh, this in terms of moving or migrating to an Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Uh, dear viewers, thank you very much for uh, you know uh, watching this and uh, uh, for, for your interest in this video. I am sure you might have a lot more questions on Oracle Cloud uh, migration from on-premise to cloud with respect to your Oracle EBS and so on. So please write into us at marketing at and uh, we will uh, run it through Srikant, get his inputs and answer back to you very very soon. Thank you very much.